One of the most fundamental and essential skills of any application development in Excel is the ability to use workbook events. Hi, this is Randy with Excel for freelancers. And today we're gonna to take a deep dive into all types of workbook events and how you can use them in your applications to create strong and powerful applications that can be used across the world. So we're gonna get started right away. I just wanted to let you know that I create these application trainings and tutorials for VBA beginners each and every weekend. And of course, comprehensive application development each and every Tuesday. I make these workbooks available for you for absolutely free. All you need to do is click the link down below. Just look for the word download, send your name and email, and I'll get that sent right over to you. I will, of course, never spam you. If you do like these trainings, there's a VBA course by my mentor, Daniel Strong, who created a 30-hour VBA course that's going to teach you everything you need to know about VBA, a great foundational type of course that you just can't miss. So make sure you get on that. Now, that link is down below as well. Let's go over this. I've got a cheat sheet here that's going to go over most important workbook events. And we're going to get into exactly how we do that and why they're important. And of course, how you can use them. In fact, we'll be creating a scenario in where you can use that for such as a login screen. So we're going to be going over them. First of all, what is a workbook event? Well, a workbook event is triggered on some type of workbook option, such as open, close, activate or deactivate, or it could be individual sheets, all the sheets, such as any type of selection change on any sheet or any type of worksheet change on any sheet. And we'll be going over those as well, or maybe even deleting a sheet. So when you want to create triggers or you want something to happen on any one of these events, we use VBA to do that. So let's get right into it and show you exactly how we can create some of these types of macros and events and perform actions on that. First thing we wanna do is make sure we've got the developers tab open. If you don't have it, and you wanna get straight into the VBA editor, you can use the Alt F11. If you don't have the developer visible, you can click Customize Ribbon and just make sure you select on the developer here to make sure that you have it visible. Once you click on that, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you go to the Visual Basic here. And what that's gonna do is gonna open up the workbook here. Now, you have your workbook here. You've got individual sheets, sheet one, two, three, and uh, sheet five here. Let me just rename that so it is not confusing for you because I was doing some additional workbook. So let's do that. I'm going to update that and just going to change this to sheet five just so we're not confused. I don't want to have that. These are the sheet names and the code names. So everything's titled properly. So the first thing what we want to do is we want to go into this workbook here. So it says this workbook. This is where all of your events are created. Now each individual sheet has their own and it looks the same. But what we want to do is we want to click on this workbook. That is where our events are going to be located. Then we have our first option here, which is called workbook. So we want to select on workbook. Once we have workbook selected, all the events for the individual workbook are going to be right here. All of them. And I've listed a bunch of them and their uses in the cheat sheet. So this is how we do everything here. So for example, we already have open. Open was the one that's selected. And this means this event is going to happen as soon as we open the workbook. So for example, if I decided a message box this workbook is now open. So it's just a simple message box and it's gonna happen. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna save our work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this workbook and then I'm going to reopen it. So we've already saved it, it's gonna close. And now simply I'm just going to open it up here and we're gonna pull it up. Okay, so we have it up here. And now we see as soon as it opens, we get the message box that says workbook is now open. So we see that that event was triggered on our workbook open. Now, why would you want something like this? Now, there may be actions that we want to perform specifically on a workbook open. What type of actions might you want? You may want to check for data. We may want to download some data. We may want to do certain things like display certain sheets. So what would be an action? And we also have workbook close event. So let's create a scenario that you might want to use the workbook open event. Let's say that we have a login, we want to close our workbook, we want to kind of lock it up. So to do that, we can also use a workbook close event. So let's take a look at another event that we might want to create and work together. So we have something called workbook close. So we're going to go down here, we're going to look for the close event. It's actually before close. So the idea is this, we want to perform some action. And if we want to get out of that action before 
before we actually close the workbook, we can use cancel as Boolean. So what does that mean? If we said cancel as true, that means the workbook will not close. So we might want to do something like if input box, input box, are you sure you want to close this workbook equals and then we could do something like does not equal yes if, as long, if they don't say yes we're not going to close the workbook so yes then cancel equals true okay so we're going to cancel out of that so now what we're going to do is we're going to save our work and what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this workbook here and we see that we have the message box. Are you sure you want to close this workbook? And if we type anything but yes, we're going to click OK and it's not going to close. See, it didn't happen. However, if we type yes, of course, it's going to close. Now, this gives us a way to do that. So if I type in yes, clicking OK, it's going to close that workbook. So we see how that's working. It's working quite well. Opening back the workbook, we've got our workbook event. So now let's put this into a real world use. And I've got a start screen here. Let's say I've got an application. And when I close the workbook, I want this screen to show up when new user opens it. So the best way to do that is to create an event on close that will hide all the other sheets. We're giving the user a start screen so that the user can see that. So let's take a look and see how we would do something like that. Now we can also do a few things. So let's go back into the developers and we can write a macro in a module or we can write it directly in the workbook event. So here's what I mean. We can click insert here and click module. Now we can write a macro called, let's say sub close workbook. And so this macro is going to run. When we want to close the workbook. So here's what I want to do. What I would like to do is I would like to activate this screen and I would like to hide all of the other screens just as we would if we want the user to see a specific screen on the startup. Maybe we want them to log in and the only way that we want the other sheets to show is if they've logged in correctly. So let's create that scenario and see how we can use these workbook events to our advantage. So what we're going to do is first, I want to activate the start sheet. So we're going to do start the start sheet. Here's sheet two right here. So sheet two dot activate. Okay. So we're going to activate that. It's always important. If we're going to be hiding sheets, we have to choose one sheet that's not hidden. And the first thing we want to do is activate that because I cannot hide the sheet that I'm currently on. So now what we're going to do is why don't we dimension a worksheet so we can dimension worksheet as worksheet. And I'm going to loop through all the worksheets in the workbook. I'm going to hide them all except for the start sheet. So here's what we're going to do for each worksheet in this workbook dot sheets. And here's what we're going to do next worksheet. So what this code is going to do is going to loop through all of the worksheets in the workbook. If worksheet dot name does not equal start, then worksheet dot i want to hide it so the visible property is going to be equal to hidden very good now the first thing what i want to do is i just want to run this code to make sure that it works so i'm going to run the code and we see that all the sheets have been hidden i'm going to change it to visible just to change it back so we're looking down here at the tabs if as soon as i run this code we see that they all become visible so we see that down here so we know the code is working properly now what i'm going to do is i'm going to change it back to hidden now what we want to do is we can add this code directly in the workbook event or we can simply copy this macro. We'll do this. We're going to go into the workbook here and we're going to look for the before close. So we don't want to cancel. I simply want to hide the sheets so I can run this macro. So remember, we can do two things. We can run this here or we can use this. If you have a lot of workbook events, sometimes it's nice to keep them in an individual module, but it'll work just as fine. Great. So now what we want to do is I want to close this workbook and I want to make sure that it runs. So we see it's a nice way to protect it. So here we go. Let's go ahead and save our work. Always save our work. And also when we close our work, if we're making any changes, it's going to ask us to close and I'll show you how what's going to happen in a moment. So we've saved our work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to close our workbook now. It's going to say, do you want to save your changes? Now we just saved the changes. Why is it asking me again? Here's why it's asking me again, because it's now just hidden all those sheets. So the reason is changes have been made and I want to save it. And yes, and it's going to close the workbook. Great. Opening up the workbook again. And so what we want to do is I really don't want to have that. We can hide that. I don't want to have that warning before the workbook is closed. So how do we avoid that? All we need to do is just add this workbook 
dot save. Okay, so we're going to save the workbook. We're telling it to save. And as long as there's no changes after this, it won't request us to save again. So that's working great. I also want to create a workbook open event. Let's say we want the user to log in. What kind of workbook event? Let's create a small login screen or login, let's say user form, and we'll do that. So I'm just going to simply insert here a user form and we can just create a small one. It could be very fast. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the properties and I'm just going to call this login form. And we also want to use the text here. So we just say login and it doesn't actually have to work. We don't have to keep any data. It's just for the fact. So I'm going to click on here and I'm going to create a label up here and we're just going to call this login form. So I'm going to click once a slow kick login form i uh, are going to change the text here we're going to click on the font and i'm simply going to change that to let's say 12 in bold and click ok we'll also change to center here and then we're going to line it in the middle so it's just something easy for us right here so uh, let's pull that up in the middle now once we have that what i would like to do is i want to make sure we add some fields so i'm just going to add a label here we're just going to call this username and then we're going to call it password and that's going to be it so this will be called user name so we also want to increase the font to that we can select on that and also go to the font here and then we can duplicate it and we'll make this one 11 and click ok we are going to write justify that here and so we're just going to copy that and paste it we're going to use that for password Control c Control v so we're going to move in so this is going to be a nice little form something that you can use inside your applications very good so now we just want to create a small text box so that we can see how we can get this user form to display automatically and then we don't need any information here so i'm just going to make it look a little bit nicer but aligning the rights and i'm going to control c control v and i'll just create some buttons here so it's kind of a little bit more normal so we can see how it's done okay so i'll do control a and then just put okay in here i'm going to change the font just like we've done before going to the font and we're going to set that to bold and 12 and then we're going to duplicate that for the cancel button we don't need to do much work so control c control v normally you check the password but we're not going to worry about that now cancel we can also change the background if we want to a custom color so that it looks like a little bit nicer we have this one on the palette and then if we want the labels i'm going to hold the control down on here and i'm going to set those to transparent so we've got our login form and so basically what i want to do on the ok button is i want to hide the form just for now so the form name is login form dot hide. Okay, so we're going to hide that form. It'll go back to lowercase. Great. So that's just the button one click. So here's what I want to do. I want to show that login form on the open event. So how do we do that? So we're going to go back into this workbook. We're going to create an open event and we're going to say login form dot show. So that's all we're going to do. Perfect. So here we've got closing the workbook. And what I would like to do is when they press OK, why don't we run a macro to open the workbook? Let's just assume that they enter the password. So here what we're going to do, we're going to do unlock workbook. I'm going to copy that for a reason. But this one, we're going to call this unlock workbook. And we're going to do the same thing. It's sheet two is already going to be activated. So we don't need to activate that. We could activate another sheet. We don't need to save it. But here's what we're going to do. We're simply going to take each sheet and we're going to make it visible and when do i want to run that i want to run that when they press okay uh this, it, i they're missing an eye there so what we want to do is we want to run this unlock the workbook as soon as they press okay so we're going to go to the viewing the code here after the form is hidden we're going to paste it and unlock the workbook so we can run that to make sure that it's working here we'll keep an eye on the sheets here as we run this to make sure it's going to work and you see all the sheets are now visible so here we have everything set up for our event we've got before close we're going to close it and we want to show the login form so saving our work here we are now going to close our workbook and see how these events take effect going back in we're now going to open up this workbook here and we'll open up and now we see we've got our login form perfectly placed we have nothing else so the workbook events are working quite well we've got our workbook open and we just click ok and now everything's going to open up so that's a nice way to use our open and close events what about some other events let's take a look on our cheat sheet we've also have activate now activate is different than open if you have multiple workbooks open when one becomes available it is activated so let's take a look when the worksheet is activated perform actions when the workbook becomes the active window so let's see how the activate would work so what we're going to do is i'm going to open up another workbook just an empty workbook and then what we're going to do is we're going to go into our original we'll just go back to the developers and we're going to create a workbook activate event so i'm going to close this out for now we're going to go back into the workbook here and we're going to look for our activate event which is going to be up at the top and we're going to close that out we don't need that here's the workbook activate so message box this workbook has 
been activated. And now, why don't we do another one? Why don't we do a deactivated? So we're gonna create a deactivated workbook right here. So miss that and then just put in D. So that's nice. So now that we have another workbook open, let's minimize this. I've got our other workbook. I'm gonna use control tab to switch between the events. And we see that as soon as we switch to a new workbook, we've got our message box that the workbook has been deactivated. I'm gonna use again, control tab to switch and we see that the workbook has been activated. So we can create actions when a workbook is deactivated or activated relatively easy using both the workbook activate and deactivate. So we can get rid of those. We kind of understand what's going on. Great. So what about some else? Let's take a look inside our cheat sheet. So we understand after save, we can let the user know we can create an after save workbook or before close, which we want or before print. Now before print can be handy because let's say we want to print this list, but if it gets larger, we want to do something before it's printed. So how would we do that? Let's take a look inside that. And so let's say we want to run an action before the print. When we print it, something's gonna happen before. And maybe what we want to do is we want to set the page layout. Now we can do it here using the print area and we can set a print area, but what if we want to do that through VBA and we want to determine the last row and then print it out all the data regardless? How would we do that? Well, we can do that using the before print. So we would do something like this to mention the last row as long. And we want to focus on what is that last row? So we can do with sheet we're going to focus on. And I really want to focus on sheet one, which is our cheat sheet. So the last row is equal to, let's say column B dot range. B, and then we'll use a larger row, 999.nxlup.row. So the last row with data. That end with comes up automatically on my auto hotkey. It's usually useful, sometimes annoying. So what we want to do is I want to determine the last row of data. This is 22. And I want to print everything from B to all the way through D in the last row. But the last row, we don't really know when that is. So we're going to determine the last row. Now that we know the last row based on this, all we need to do is then set that page. So dot since we're already in sheet one, page setup dot print area is going to be equal to what? We're going to use the absolute here. So we're going to start it out, of course, in B2. Once we set it to B2, then I want to go all the way through using the colon, then D, and then we want to do the last row and the last row row. Okay, so we've set the page up and then all we need to do is just set print out and then we'll use the default printer. So we don't need to use any other settings. But if you can take a look at them want to do some settings, the only things you may want to do are setting it up to make sure that the print area is honored. So we can use the comma two copies preview, we don't want to preview it active printer is true, we want to set that active printer print to file false collate print and we ignore print areas and we'll set that to false. So it's going to be printing it out automatically and it's going to be dynamic, which I like. So all we need to do is just hit print and everything's going to be working fine. So let's do that. So I'll use control P for print. It's going to print it out. Let's change the page layout. Let's just fit to this green one page and we'll set the layout here portrait. We can of course do this as well. So we see that everything is working fine. However, let's add some information to that and we'll just add some data. So let's just say test. So we see that the print area is automatically set. Test, test here. Okay, so now printing it again, we're just gonna print that additional data because before print, it's automatically going to be set. So it's very helpful, although this is in a table, but if it was in a range, it would still work just fine. Let's change it to a range to make sure that it's not the table. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna convert this to a range and we're gonna click okay. So we don't necessarily need a table. Test again. So we see now that it's now been converted here. So let's just bring it all the way down here. And we want it to basically print all the way to row 29. Again, print. Control P. So we see now in the preview, it's all included. So we see that it's automatically going to print out because before print is determining the last row, which can be quite helpful. Very good. So we see how we can use the before print. What other kind of events are quite helpful? We also have before save. If you want the user to check something before save, we can do that. Let's take a look at the before save. So what we're going to do is we're going to select on here before save, oops, not before close, before save here in case we want to check something before we're actually saving it. When you see cancel as Boolean, and we can also save UI as Boolean, but let's try the cancel. Maybe we want to check some value before we actually save it. Maybe we want to require the user to do something before they save it. So we can do something like if we can use input box, are you sure you want to save? Or maybe we can say, have you checked something does not equal yes, then cancel 
equals true and what this is going to do it's not going to save it based on that otherwise it's going to save it and that is going to be before save so if i do either control save or i simply just select file and save here and then what we're going to do is we're going to get this are you sure you want to save and if i say yes it's going to save if i say no it's not so again i can do control s and if I put no, it's not going to save, although you can't see it, but that's true. So it's working quite nicely. We can cancel something or we can perform some action before we actually save it. So it can also be very helpful. We can comment this out just to make sure that we continue to save our work without that coming. Great. So we've seen before print, before save, we can perform some actions every time we create a new sheet. So that's kind of a nice, and that means every single new sheet. Then that can be helpful. Let's say we want to format every sheet and we want to give it a specific font or a specific color we can do something like that for every new sheet or we can copy the format of an existing sheet and we can do it to a new sheet so there's lots of events that you might want to do on a new sheet for example we can just do message box a new sheet was created and then we can put the sheet name and then we put and let's do space here so the sh is the sheet and sh dot name so it's going to say what that sheet is it's going to be very helpful and that's the i values object so a new sheet was created and then we'll put the sheet name very good so that's going to be every time a new sheet is created so now that we have that we're going to create a brand new sheet and we see it says a new sheet was created and sheet one so it gives us the name of the sheet it can be very helpful we can create a lot of macros we can create a macro that's going to format a sheet the way we want it to for every new sheet that's created so it can be a very helpful workbook event we can also warn before deleting a sheet so if we want to work on specifically before delete we can use the sheet before delete just like that again here we have the sheet name as an object and we can say something like message box sh dot name and is about to be deleted again we can perform some action before a sheet is actually deleted so that can be very helpful so again we've got this brand new sheet here i'm going to right click and i'm just going to delete it here first of all you get the standard microsoft warning which is delete and then we get our own one sheet three is about to be deleted so we see before the delete we can actually perform some action so it can be very helpful another powerful event of the workbook events is the sheet before right click the sheet before right click runs as soon as we right click on something and one of the things that i like to do is add a context menu item here to expand upon the context with any custom macros that you might want to add so let's take a look at how we might go about that we're going to go back into the VBA and we see here one of the options is sheet before right click. So what we'd like to do is why don't we add an item on our context menu? So to do that, we first need to dimension a variable. So we're going to use something like dimension menu item as a command button. So we want to add a command button. So here we're looking for command bar button that's the one we want to have then with this what we want to do is we want to add a custom menu item so to do that we will then set that menu item so we're going to use set menu item is going to be equal to application dot command bars that's what we're going to be adding so we're looking for command bars then we're going to create cell it's an index cell then what we want to do is controls we're going to be adding what type of control so controls inside that controls we want to add one and we want to give it a type what type of button are we going to use in this case we're going to use equals mso control button so mso control button so now that we have that we also want to add before where do we want to place i'm going to put it at the top so i'm going to use before equals one so that's going to add it right there then we can focus on that menu item once we have created it then we're going to put the focus down on that so here's what we're going to do we're going to put with that menu item and we're going to do some end with so inside there we want to do a few things first thing we're going to do is set a caption so caption that's the name equals we'll just call this custom option and then what we want to do is we want to set a macro so it's going to be dot on action it means the macro that's tied now we haven't created a macro yet we'll just call this custom action so what we want to do is we want to make sure we actually create a macro for that so we're going to go into our modules here and we're just going to create sub and then create a custom action uh let's do a message box message box right click macro so now we have that here's what we're going to do so we still have to do a few things but what i want to show you is what it looks like right now so when i right click on any sheet we've got custom option here now when i right click again you're going to see it twice why is that 
because we didn't delete it, right? So now we have it twice. So anytime you create one, you also must delete one. So let's take a look at that. Let's create another macro because we want to run it a few different times. So we're going to write sub, let's just call this clear menu item. And with that, we can create as many as we want. But the thing is, once it's cleared, if it doesn't exist, it could create an error. So we're going to wrap it in on error, resume next and on error, go to zero. That means if it doesn't exist, it won't create an error, it'll just continue on. So that's important. So what we're going to do is we're going to do application dot command bars. And then again, same with the cell, just like we did cell dot controls then with that controls what we want to do is we want to make sure we got the name the same just in case you're not sure you're going to look back in the workbook event i want to make sure that the name is exactly the same text custom option is what we called it and custom option is exactly what we want to delete and we're going to use dot delete okay so that's it so we're just deleting it and we want to run this a few times right so i want to run it first before we create a new one and if you don't want to use it in another workbook, you'd have to delete it on deactivate. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So the first thing is we're going to run this before we even add it. So in other words, we're adding one, but we have to clear anyone out. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to clear one, but we still have two, right? So if I see notice, it's creating one. So all we would have to do is run this macro a few times, one and then two, right? So we ran it twice. We deleted both instances of it. Now in right click, we're going to see we only have one instance one instance, one instance, which is exactly what we want. Now, if you only want this available inside an existing workbook, what you want to do is you want to make sure to delete it before deactivating. Maybe you only want this available for a single workbook. And here's where another workbook event comes in. So we have our workbook events and then we have our deactivate. That's a perfect application of how we can use the deactivate. So we would just go in here and we would look at the deactivate event. And then here we would just run the macro. And so now let's double check to make sure it's working just fine in here. When I switch to a new workbook, let's do that. Switching to the new workbook, we see that it doesn't exist. So that's a great way to automatically deactivate it before adding it to the next one. So here we can use both the deactivate and the right click to add a context menu. So before right click is a great event to do that. All right, very good. We're just about out of time for this training. We did go over a lot. I'm going to keep these macros as I have. And also make sure you download the cheat sheet, which is going to show you all of these macros. I hope you do like these trainings. If you love working with VBA, then you're going to love my ultimate developers library. I've got over 500 macros in this library. All you need to do is just copy the code or you can actually enter an auto hotkey shortcut, just as I use auto hotkey, and automate the entry of any macros. They're all designed with categories and types, easily find. You can actually put a search in here. So if you wanna add any type of macro, we can easily sort or anything like that. Simply copy the macro along with the description. So that's the Ultimate Developers VBA Library. I've got it on sale now and I'll include the links down below. Thank you so much for your continued support. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, that notification, click on that, and comment below. Let me know what you think and any upcoming trainings that you might want to see. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week.